All right, welcome to the fifth episode of the Plan B podcast. I think we should start to name these eventually, like you told me last <laughs> night. I think that would be great. I don't know what the hell we would name this one, but maybe we can figure it out by the end. Um, <laughs> I want to start off by giving a big happy birthday shout out to Queens Over Bitches and the Handy J who uh, I was visiting in L.A. for the last week for their birthdays. Um, it was lit, <laughs> I guess you could say. You know, we're, I found myself at a restaurant at like 10 o'clock at night sitting there with those two and another guy, and we sat there and talked about how to properly install a child child's car seat into a car and how difficult it was and that that was how lit my Thursday night was so yeah very very interesting conversation apparently it's very hard to do that I, I hope to never know um so tonight a couple a couple topics to touch on um the first being I had a lot of people reach out to me and wanted me to talk about this. And I am he- I was hesitant to talk about it because I don't really want to talk about anything involving children. Um, but a lot of people were like, you know, can you, t- can you touch on children being hypersexual or even sexual at a young age? Um, and they were equating it to my story about when I said I was in preschool and I got in trouble for making the girls line up and kiss me. So until they put in those terms, I was like, eh, I really don't want to talk about that, but fuck it. Let's talk about it because we have talked about a lot of my Snapchat and it was very interesting to say the least, how many people um, have stories about being not sexual in the manner of sex, but doing things as a kid that were, I don't, I don't even know how to fucking say it. I, I can remember. I being, would say it's like exploring your body. I mean, you're a child. It's doing what felt it's good. Curiosity. Yeah. And yeah, you're just, you're figuring out what it is and Oh, like that feels good. And then that causes this and like that. Yeah. And that, that's really like we, we've had, man, we've probably spent weeks talking about it cause it just progresses into something else. I can't tell you, like, I can remember being at a really young age and, you know, being attracted to my mom's friends, you know, and and I I remember I would be obsessed with tits, obsessed with tits. And I'm not even a boob guy, like as an adult, I'm not, but I was obsessed with my mom's friends' tits. Um, (laughs) But the, the conversation we would have on my Snapchat and the reason it would progress because these girls would write in and they would talk about, oh, yeah, I used to hump this or hump that. You know, I'd be like, uh, you know, three, four years old and I'm humping this or I'm humping that. And then and then it would go into like their teenage years where they're using this, that and the other to get off. Men don't, you know, men have their hand to get off with. Pretty much that's all you need. Um, so <laughs> it, it was very interesting to see. And a lot of them carried over into adulthood. <laughs> Do you have any uh, experience with this? Um, sort of. I know I didn't, I never talked to anybody about it ever in my life until I saw it on your Snapchat. And I saw that a lot of, I guess there were women that were saying it, that they would like a hump of stuffed animals or like a couch or something. And that. I used to do that when I was younger, but at the time, like being that young, I didn't know what I was doing. I just know that like it felt good, but right. I didn't know that, what it was or, you know, but I never told anybody until I saw it on your Snapchat. So I held the secret for so long because I thought I was weird. Like, cause now that I'm an adult, I know what I was doing and it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I'm glad I'm not the only one. And I think that was like most women's reaction to it. They would write in and they'd be like, oh my God, I thought I was the only one. Um, I was humping couches and, <laughs> and stuffed animals seemed to be the big one, the big two. Um, 
But it's funny how many of those like carried over into adulthood and how many women still will hump a fucking piece of furniture or a fucking stuffed animal <laughs> or their vibrating toothbrush. That's a really big one, as a matter of fact. And you wouldn't think that it would be the bristles of the fucking toothbrush on their clit, but that's exactly what the fuck they're doing. That seems like it would hurt. Like, I can't imagine putting that on the head of my dick. I, I would fucking freak out. Like, I cannot even imagine that. <laughs> so, I, it's, it's very common. And a lot of women were like, I thought I was the only one. I know, for me, several women that I sleep with regularly were, were doing the same thing. You know, they were humping things. Um, so... <laughs> And this is, I, you know, this is coming from, like, I I hit puberty, I think. I don't know how to, I don't know when I hit puberty, but I busted my first nut at nine years old. And, you know, it was very young for, at least in my generation, that was very young, especially for a man. And, and I remember being very attracted to women much younger than that. So I think it goes both ways. Um, I don't know though. I don't know. I'm not a fucking doctor, you know, I will say, I, I will say this. You, you said to me, we had a conversation one time. It was like a year or two ago and it blew my mind because I never thought about it like this. I had told you I had busted my first nut at nine years old and that, you know, effectively changed my life to some extent. Mm -hmm. And you were like, you, you didn't have a childhood. You're you got robbed of your childhood and that kind of blew my mind because I never thought about it like that. And then I started to think about it and I was like, damn, she's right. You know, everybody was out playing. I said that. I yeah. don't even remember. Yeah. I will never forget that shit because <laughs> you know, everybody's out playing fucking tag and whatever. And I'm trying to find whose dad's got the best porn I could steal from. Him. And we're talking about magazines here. <laughs> I was too young to have a oh fucking my. VCR. <laughs> yeah. That's how far. VCR. <laughs> so, um, oh my gosh. But I wouldn't were have you, so the first time you ever, like, the first time you ever busted a nut, were you like, like, after it happened, were you like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Is this normal? Or did you already know? <laughs> did I already know? I didn't, I, didn't I know. didn't know. I didn't, like, technically know for like a couple more years. I went to Catholic school. Like, they didn't, you didn't get sex ed and what, was sex ed was a fucking joke until like seventh grade. So I was in fourth or fifth grade. I don't remember which one. I want to say it was fourth grade, but I don't remember. Um, and this was like back in the day when like the whole AIDS craze was going on. And so everybody had AIDS and this, that, and the other. I busted that nut. I was like, holy shit, do I have AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I thought I had fucking AIDS because I busted it up for at least a year. I thought I fucking had AIDS. After a year, I was probably like, oh, I, I haven't died yet. I must not have it. it scared the fucking shit out you of me. You never said anything to anybody. No, fuck no. I, what do I say? I would talk to my well, fucking like, father I about I might it. Have AIDS. Huh? Like, you didn't tell your mom, like, I think I might have AIDS. I need to go to the doctor. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sounds like something she would say to me these days. You probably have AIDS, you nasty motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but no, hell no, I wasn't. It's not like, you get, you know, when you get your period, you really don't have a choice. You're bleeding from your fucking vagina. And whether you know what's going on or not, you probably should talk to somebody about that. You know? AIDS. You have AIDS if you bleed from your vagina. <laughs> this is my life. And I wouldn't have had it any other fucking way. I'll never forget. I was I was laying in my fucking bed like, I don't even know. It was whatever time my parents made me go to bed at that age. And for some reason, I, now I sound like one of the ch these chicks because for some reason I was laying in bed with a fucking a pillow, rubbing the pillow up and down on my dick. And next thing I know, oh, there goes your childhood. So... <laughs> Oh my god! I think I think it's really normal. Um, somebody actually even messaged me about it. I think yesterday, and she was like, "You know, 
when I was growing up and I was doing the same thing, I was humping things and I got shamed for it by my family and blah, blah, blah. Um, so now that I have kids and they do the same thing, I'm like, okay, you have, you can do that, but go do it in your room by yourself, like time and place kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And uh, not like in front of the family while you're watching, like, Oh man, I have heard some stories though. <laughs> I've heard some <laughs> stories. I just, I believe in time and place. Definitely. But <laughs> Yeah, some of the stories I've heard from some of these people, I'm like, Jesus Christ, how have you made it this far in your life? <coughs> um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know really how much they wanted us to talk about it or what to say about it, but it's uh, obviously it's normal. Um, so, I mean, I, you got anything to add to it? Um, I don't think so, no. Let's move on to one of my favorite topics, and I <laughs> hadn't. I, I honestly didn't talk about it last week because I, I didn't think that like I thought you would just be like ooh disgusting and not want to talk about it whatsoever. Um, it's not feet, people. Relax. <laughs> uh, water sports. Tell me about water your. Sports. Tell me about your experience with water sports. And I'm not talking about jet skis. Um, We're talking R. Kelly style bitches, um, which I'm a big fan of. But I, I thought you would be like repulsed by it. And I don't know how good the conversation would have been. But then you said whatever you said. And I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> um, so I'm very curious to hear what your experience with it is. Um, well, my experience with it is it's fairly minimal and it's fairly recent. It's not something I've been doing for a long time. Um, but it's, um, I enjoy it. I like it. And, um, I don't really have much to say about it except for at least maybe if you don't think you're going to like it, just try it just to see, because you never know. But if you're going to do it, in my experience, I've always done it in the shower. I don't know how other people do it, but I think the shower is the best. I've always done it in the shower. Don't do it in your bed. No, <laughs> no. I think that's okay. too much. I, and I'm sure there's people that do that. And I, I definitely have a um, waterproof mattress protector for squirters. But I think peeing, you're just taking it to another level. Um, so I've always done it in the shower. But I've been doing that shit, fuck, man, over 10 years. Uh, the first time I ever did, ever did, I had this chick, and she would just let me do anything to her. And it was probably around the whole time that R. Kelly was, you know, being outed <laughs> for doing that shit. And she was like, you can do anything you want to me, baby, anything you want. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I grabbed the video camera. I was like, get in the shower. I'll never forget this shit's on video too. I'm about to fucking start pissing on this bitch. And she's like, just not in my and as she said face, literally started peeing at the same time all over her fucking face. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. Um, rest in peace to her because she died. So that's sad. Um Oh my god. <laughs> But I was, I was, uh, you, yeah, yeah, let's just move on from that. <laughs> it wasn't from being peed were on. You, were you, like, scared the first time or, like, nervous or anything at all? Or you were, like, all for it? No, I will say that it's, it can be difficult, especially when you have, like, it's, it's hard to pee when you have a hard dick, period. Whether you're in the middle of, you know, peeing on someone or just trying to pee, it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of concentration. Um, but I think the more you do it, the easier it becomes, at least in my experience. So, but I was shocked when I put it out there because I've put it out there a little bit here and there, but I, about a month or two ago, I really put it out there on my Snapchat and the amount of people that are actually into it kind of blew my mind. And I think it blew a lot of people's mind. Um, I guess people just don't talk about it you know, are into it, but don't talk about it. I don't want to say that it's like mainstream. because it's definitely not. 
Because I told no, I, I told you a lot of the chicks that I'll be like, Do you have any boundaries? The first thing they'll say is no pee. And you know, okay, fine. But the amount of women that were into it blew my fucking mind. Um and there were some there were some wild ass stories. You know, chicks love to get pissed inside of, whether it's in their ass or in their fucking pussy or mouth. Um God, it's a good time to be alive. That's all I can <laughs> A guy I know, he told me a story once. I think he said he was, like, super drunk, like, having sex with this girl. And um, he thought that he was, like, coming, but he later found out that he was just peeing in her. <laughs> See. Which, that's never happened to me. I don't want to be peed in, but I'll be peed on. I, I, I've heard a couple of those stories. Some girls tell me she was, oh, I was sucking this guy's dick, blah, blah, blah. He thought he was coming, but he pissed in my mouth. I, I don't, I don't see how that's possible. I personally, like, I know the difference, whether you're intoxicated, sober, whatever. I know the difference between I'm about to pee and I'm about to come. Like, I, it, so it's hard for me to wrap my brain around it. Maybe they're not lying. Maybe the guy did it on purpose. I think it's probably more likely that he did it on purpose. Um, but I just can't wrap my brain around that because it's there's such a fucking difference. And it, uh, women are probably listening thinking, oh, but when I squirt, it feels like I have to pee. Well, that, you're a woman, and that's a vagina. This is a penis, and it's way different. <laughs> like, it just doesn't seem plausible to me. So Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't have one, but I would think that it would feel different. And I don't know, like for being a girl, like, <clears throat> I don't think that I could actually pee while having sex. Like, even if I tried or if I really had to go, like, I don't think that I actually could do it. Like, I don't know. Is it physically possible to just pee while you're having sex for a girl? Have you been peed on? Has a girl peed on you? No. Why would any girl pee on me? I don't I don't. <laughs> No, but like on accident or something, like she really had no. to go or something. No, no. Like, I don't think I could actually do it because like I'll have sex and have to pee really bad. But like it, I can't get like it just doesn't happen. And I don't I'm not like that. I want it to. But I don't think that I could I ever actually do it because your body's tensed up. And, and uh, you know, to some extent, when you pee, you have to be relaxed. I couldn't like I can be fucking and have to piss. I'm. It may keep me from coming, to be honest. It could definitely keep me from coming, depending on how bad I got to piss. But yeah, I'm not gonna like focus. I'm not gonna piss in the middle of sex. It's already hard enough to piss on a bitch, like you know, not having you know she's just on her fucking knees. Like there's no way in hell. I can't imagine being in a position where I'm like pounding some chick and I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I just pissed. I just filled you up with piss. My bad. Like you know, the urge to piss comes from your fucking bladder. The urge to come comes from your balls. Like it's completely different. I don't know how else to explain that. <laughs> I do love water sports though, and I, I think they're great. I think it's. I, I don't know. I feel like it's an extension of coming. Like I'm not really coming, but I'm like kind of coming. <laughs> Uh, and for me, it's just, it's nothing but like being degraded. Yeah. Well, like yeah. Being, that's, that's what it is for me. That's what it is for me too. It's the degrading <laughs> factor. That's why it's hot to me. Um, and I, I done, I done did some degrading pissing, pissing in girls' mouths, faces, whatever. Seen some swallow it too. So. Oh, oh no. I've had it in my mouth. It literally tastes so terrible. Like, so terrible. There's no way I could swallow it. No way. Well, would you rather swallow it or lick somebody's <laughs> foot? <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, as I told you. I feel like you, I'm... What you say? I, like I told oh you, God. I'm a man of my word. I told you I'd have flip-flops <laughs> on from now on. Now. There's my foot, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Look, I have my socks on. See, fucking weirdo. All the time. Fucking weirdo. Do they have little grippies oh, on the bottom, like an no, old person? They don't have, have grippies. <laughs> Does it look like they have grippies? I can't see. It's too dark. <laughs> so, 
So, which one is it? Which would you rather do? I see how much pee do I have to swallow? A good mouthful. Like a drop? A good mouthful. Oh, oh, how, how much licking of the foot do I have to do? Top to bottom, like from- top to bottom, and in between the t- the first two. Oh, oh no, I would swallow the pee. <laughs> Excuse me, let me make a note of that real quick. <laughs> that was really hard. I'm sweating. <laughs> Yo, so we, somebody suggested that we start doing uh, what would you rather do, and we were going to start it this week, but I just didn't think of anything and I don't think you thought of anything so we were going to push it off to next week but I'm, I'm glad it started out like that that was perfect <laughs> cannot wait Ooh. to pee in your mouth oh my god while I hold one foot in front of your face and tell you to decide oh my god <laughs> I have no fucking chill I'm assuming you don't have one that for me that sounds like a terrible terrible time like Torture. <laughs> Not the good kind. Uh, it depends on who you're asking. I mean, <laughs> sounds like a great time to me, to be quite honest. <laughs> so, oh, God. it's all about perception. Um, so, let's, <coughs> let's get into some questions. Um, if we didn't get to your questions before, we'll eventually get to all of them. We keep them all saved and sort them by how stupid they are. (laughs) Uh, Can you find the first one? Did I fuck it up that bad Uh, that you can't find the first one? No, I got the first one. So should I read the whole thing? Yeah, fuck it. I'm so bad at reading. Okay. Hi. The truth is, I only only started this to improve your reading skills, so you can thank me later. (laughs) I feel like this is so bad. All right, first like, of all, I think you're on the wrong one. Oh, it's not that one? That's not the first one? No. What's What's the first one? Hey, I have a question. Where is Hey, I have a question? Damn, you were on like, you were way down. Oh, oh they're backwards for me. Okay, that's the last one that I see. Have okay. at it. Use your okay. finger. Just really slowly. Hey, I have finger. a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I have a question. I met this guy on Tinder and we've been sexting for about a week and it sounds like he's the perfect amount of rough for me. Last night, he wanted to talk on the phone. The second I heard his voice, I got so turned off. He sounded like a 15-year-old nerd slash virgin. Stuttered a little bit too. I stutter too. You know, you can still get laid if you have a stutter. Damn. What would you do if you were me? <laughs> would you still fuck him or does that even matter to you? Um, what would you do? I actually had <laughs> I actually had this happen to me once. I was talking to a guy on Tinder too. We never sexted. We just like texted for a little bit. And then we were going to meet up for the first time. And um, he called me to, like, see where I was because I texted him and I was like, oh, I'm here. And he's like, yeah, me too. Where are you? Whatever. So he called me and I answer the phone and I hear his voice for the first time. And it's, like, kind of high pitched, like, for a guy. Not super high pitched, but not good. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm, like, talking to him on the phone, pretending like it's not a big deal. I meet up with him. And, like, we got along pretty well. Everything was fine. I ended up having sex with him <laughs> still. Cock monster for but the But he bought me Chipotle. <laughs> he bought me Chipotle. I, I mean, I, I, I feel to. like, yeah, you're kind of obligated at that point. <laughs> did, he, did he pay for the guac? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think I got guac. I don't remember. Yeah, probably. You I probably should have given him anal then. <laughs> And you know what? That guy, so it didn't happen that time that we had sex because we had sex like multiple times. I still talk to him every so often. Um, so you, so you got past ever... the voice. I did. I was able to get past it. Um, he's actually the first guy that ever made me squirt, too. So you never know. Was he like, oh my God, this is amazing? 
<laughs> no. So we were like having sex and I started squirting and I was embarrassed. I mean, I think that's a normal like thing, especially the first time <clears throat> that that happens. So I was embarrassed and he had a watch on, like a watch and a hat. Like he still had his watch and his hat on. Okay, hold on, hold, and... on, hold on, hold on, back it up, back it up. <laughs> what? What? He, I don't care like, about the watch. He wasn't... Why the fuck did he have a hat on? I totally I, I'm assuming don't. he was finger fucking you. No, we were like having sex. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you mean you were having sex? Why did he have his hat on? I don't know. I didn't take it off and he didn't take it off. I don't know. It didn't matter. <laughs> no, no, um, there's more to that. Like, is he balding? Um, he has like, no, like he's a black guy. So he has like super short hair already. So he just like swears <laughs> hat while he has sex. I guess so. But I squirted all over his watch. That's the point of the story. And he said that, like, he's like, oh, you're squirting everywhere. It's all over my watch. And I just, I still talk about it to this day. I'm, I, I squirted I, on somebody's watch. I'm even, like, more interested now that you said he had a high-pitched voice and, and he was a black dude. <laughs> it's like, my mind is, like, fucking blown right now. I Because of my voice and people don't know what I look like all the time, people are like, oh, I thought you were a black guy. No. But because of the voice, they think that I am. Um, so that's high-pitched hat guy for the win, I guess. <laughs> and that's what you should always refer to him as, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, so you were able to get past it, and you clearly fucked him multiple times. So Yes. Apparently, it's not that big of a deal. It's not. Um, all right. So on your podcast, you guys were talking about using protection and STDs. My cousin and I had a debate about if you're obligated to tell someone they gave you an STD, what are your thoughts? I think, yes, I think that you are obligated. I think you sh should feel obligated to tell somebody if you have an STD, especially if it's something that doesn't go away. Um, I think you're obligated. I think you should be obligated to tell them whether you're using a condom or not, because condoms, um, aren't 100% foolproof and people get herpes, um, to say the least from, you know, while using condoms all the time. But I'll say this, this chick that I know, um, she was talking about coming to visit me, whatever. And then like, she kind of fell off one day out of nowhere. It was kind of weird. But then she hit me up like a month or two later. I was like, hey, how you been? I was like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you know, you kind of fell off. Like, what happened? Did you get a boyfriend or something? She was like, no. I started fucking this dude. And he didn't tell me I had herpes. And now I have fucking herpes. Um, <gasps> oh, my God. Very grateful she didn't decide to come see me and decide to be an <laughs> adult about it. But he didn't tell her that he had herpes. And... That kind of shit really pisses me off. I I have close friends that have herpes, and I'm fairly certain that they tell whoever they're sleeping with, whether they're using protection or not, that they do have, you know, something that's not going to go away. At that point, you're letting the, the other person decide if they're willing to risk that rather than saying you're going to risk it whether you like it or not. I personally, when she told me the story, like I was mad for her. I was like... I feel like you should be able to, in a situation like that, like, I want to sue you. I want to sue you. Who the fuck, you know what I mean? I'm paying, like, I'm paying for prescriptions the rest of my life, this, that, and the other. And, you you know, you threw a fucking monkey wrench in my fucking sex life. Like, fuck yeah, you should be obligated to tell someone. If you don't, I should be able to sue your motherfucking ass. That's just my take on it. Because that shit would yeah, piss I mean, me off. If you have something, you need to get it treated if you can, obviously. And, you know, if you're aware of something, you need to tell them, tell whoever your partners are so they can get tested, you know, if they have it um, too, because you can get treated and then they have it. They don't know they have it. They don't get treated. You go and have sex with them again. Then now you have it again. 
So it's really just like an endless cycle. So you have, you kind of have to tell people. I, I've had clap three times. And the first time that I had it, uh, it was given to me by this girl. And I don't know if she knew she had it or not. A lot of times women don't know they have it. Um, it was like a one night thing. But then, and I knew she was a stripper, but I ran into this girl. I walked into the fucking strip club a couple years later. It was with my boys. And this bitch is on stage. <laughs> she tried to be nice to me. I let this bitch have it while she was on stage in this tiny ass strip club. I cussed her ass the fuck out. And maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. <laughs> like I said, I don't know if she knew she had it or not. Because a lot of times women just don't know. <clears throat> but that's how... You know, I, I take my, my fucking dick very seriously. Like I take my, you know my penis health a lot more serious than I take the rest of my health. <laughs> yeah, I've had it three times as well. Oh, which I'm surprised twinsies. you've only had it three times. I've had it three times. We're, One time we had it together. Um, we are totally STD first, twins. <laughs> the very first time I got it, was literally like so annoying because all all three times that I had it, I didn't even know I had it. So it's very common to have it and not even know. Yeah, well, at least for women. Um, so the first time I had it, um, all of my friends were like kind of slutty, and they were like sleeping around with guys all the time, right and left, not using condoms all the time. Never got an STD. I didn't. I wasn't sleeping around. I actually kind of waited to have sex for a little while. So I was a virgin. All my friends were like slutting it up. And then I finally lose my virginity. (laughs) I I finally decide I'm going to do it, whatever. I lose my virginity and I get the fucking clap. The very first guy I had sex with, I got the clap. Isn't that bullshit? (laughs) I'm giving you a clap for that. Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. I, I, I think that would, I, I can imagine that would like mentally fuck you up for sex moving forward. It, it could definitely fuck I, somebody up. Like I ain't I, nah, wearing fucking balloons on my dick and everything else. Like, no, nah, fuck that. I was just pissed off because it's like my friends are out here carelessly having sex. I'm like careful-ish. I mean, I didn't use a condom, but I'm like, I'm not a slut, but are I'm they, the one out still- of all of us. Are they all still STD free though? That's the question. Um, no. Sell your one of out. them has. <laughs> one of them got the clap <laughs> before, and. <coughs> yeah, but sorry, anything that doesn't go away. Um. Yeah, one of my other friends has um HPV, which I didn't even know that's technically an STD. So she has HPV, but I guess a lot of people have HPV. Better to be a P than an I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can, you, can you find the other one? Because I fucked this all up and I can't. I don't even know what it is. You're going to have to tell me at least the first line because it's all out of order. I really don't know. Um, whatever showed up second to last, third to last on your thing. Third to the last is that topic for next podcast what do you guys get out of that one sure fuck it go with it okay the topic for the next podcast what do you guys get out of being a dom or a sub for me it's like a consistent challenge or learning experience like if a woman completely submits to you you can completely fuck it up and disappoint the fuck out of her or own that pussy Love that challenge, to be honest. The creativity is also pretty addicting. Like, constantly coming up with new ways to get women off and learning how their bodies work. I can agree with the creativity part of it. Um, I even get ideas from stories that people send in. So, the creativity part of it is definitely fun. Um, For me, it scratches an itch for the most part. I really don't know what else to say other than that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure that, that wasn't a very wasn't good the, one. Why did I? I'm pretty sure that wasn't the question. <laughs> but Why did I pick that one? Pick, pick the one you wanted. Like, I feel like he's done some like philosophical thinking into that. 
It's, it's not that deep for me, bro. This is really not. Um, if a guy busts kind of quick, does the woman usually give him the benefit of the doubt for when they smash again the next time? Um, oh, I'm like the worst person to ask this because I'll give anybody a second chance. <laughs> Um, if their dick is big enough. <laughs> no, even like, okay, so I had sex with this guy <laughs> and his penis was so small. I didn't even like know that we were having sex. <laughs> but get this, get this. I had sex with him again. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> I know a chick. <laughs> there's, there's something wrong with me. I know a chick. She's, um, she does the same. She has this guy that has a very small penis. Um, she claims that she cannot feel it when they're having sex, but he like when she goes over to his house, he like takes you know takes care of her, feeds her dinner, like you know cooks her dinner, feeds her wine all night, and then will eat her pussy like till she comes a million times, and then he'll stick his dick in her and she'll just lay there and just you know let it happen. But she does this regularly with this dude, so. I guess it just well, the guy the I'm girl. talking about, he does not make up for it in any other way. I don't know why I did it. I only had sex with him twice, but still, I gave him another shot, and I don't know why. There's something wrong. I mean, with you me. couldn't feel it. Oh my god! But I, me personally, like if I, if I'm aiming to impress a chick, like okay, I'm fucking her for the first time, and I definitely want to fuck her again like i'm bringing my a game or at least my b plus game you know <laughs> if i fuck a chick and i bust quick which i would we'll call that the d game um it's because i i didn't fucking care to begin with and have no intentions most likely of fucking you again i can't think of a situation where i busted a fast nut and was like oh damn like she's never gonna give me another chance no like if you're like, I don't know, I just bring my A game and there's tricks to learning how to, you know, hold your nut. <laughs> Learn those fucking tricks. I think, in my opinion, or my experience with guys that bust quick, it's because they don't get laid often. Um, so when they do, it's just like they're just they're just on it like really quick and it just like it, it just happens. And I think they don't care that it's quick like that because at least they got like they they got laid and god knows how long it's been since they got laid again and they don't care if you have sex with them again because they at least got off and they know that they'll find someone again that's willing to try at least once another sucker that you don't even have to buy chipotle for she just give it up to you twice <laughs> um no i think yeah, that's it i had sex i had sex with the guy twice that he busted really quick both times and the first time I was like, okay, maybe it's just like it had been a while. So I did it again, and I don't know. It just wasn't good. How quick? How quick are we talking? Um, under a minute, I would say both times. Oh and there wasn't God. even like any, and there wasn't even any like foreplay at all. It was oh, just man. like we're having sex. Oh, we're not. Okay, we're done. Wow. Um. <laughs> Why would you give him another chance? Jesus Christ. Under a minute. I think about busting quick, well, and I good, think like five minutes at least. He had a good-sized dick. Oh, like, that's it a was shame. like a good dick. That's too bad. He just, like, didn't know how to use it. Like, just not good. Um, yeah, that's just, that's a shame. <laughs> I was going to add something to it, but I forget what the fuck, what I was saying. Um, <coughs> yeah, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Pick one and just go with it, because I don't know where to tell you to go. Okay. Um, okay, we talked about that one. Sorry, the, I'll read it. One. Fuck it, I'll read it for you. Is there a trick okay. or something to help identify lesbian or bisexual girls? The struggle is real. 
Oh. That's all you I <laughs> have no idea. <laughs> well, actually, I think I have a really gay dog. Or just in general. I think you either have it or you don't have it. And I think I have it. I think... I, I think the majority of women, I don't want to say all women, but the majority of women would entertain the thought of being with a girl. Uh, I've been with many, what I would consider straight women, and had threesomes with them. Um, and they wouldn't necessarily be categorized as bisexual. I guess technically they, they would be. But I think most women are willing to venture down that path. That's just my opinion. From from my experiences, that's what I think. I agree. I'm I mean I'm kind of the same way. Like I I'm not bisexual. Like I could never date a girl or like be in a relationship with a girl or like have a future with a girl. But I'm down to like just have fun. Or, like, experiment. Or, you know what I mean? Not, like... I definitely can never be in a relationship with a girl. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It, More, it, like, fun and, light, like, casual stuff. Yeah. Like, you're getting pounded in your ass while... By a guy while you're eating her pussy out. Like, just casual. Very casual. <laughs> yes. Very casual. <laughs> um, I had a woman ask me today... Because of something else that I had posted, she was like, well, would you ever, um, would you ever let somebody you're in a relationship with sleep with another man? Whether, I don't know if it was like in front of me or in a threesome or whatever. And I, I said, no, I wouldn't. Um, and it's a fucked up double standard, but I've, I've been with, you know, I've been in many threesomes and <laughs> I've been in many male, male, female threesomes as well. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't dating the, the girl. She was just, you know, some chick. Um, and it's a fucked up double standard. But if you really want to look at it, like women, like the female body is a fucking work of art. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, it can be. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had that. Your face was fucking priceless when you said that. Yes, it can be. It can be. It also cannot be. Um, but I think it's it's more natural for a woman to see a woman and be attracted. Like, the male, male, female threesome is so... The dynamic to me is so different. Like, completely fucking different. Um like I'm not if I'm in a you know a threesome with two chicks like they're gonna be hooking up the whole time you know what I mean if I'm in a threesome with two dudes and a chick like, we ain't touching each other <laughs> there's no attraction there <laughs> like you gotta focus on what you're doing to make sure you stay fucking hard to ignore this asshole and what he's doing over here so <laughs> I think it's a double standard but it's just a fact of fucking life as far as I'm concerned <laughs> <coughs> you're right, Sorry. You're right over there. Um, I'm just dying all the time. You know, I agree. I it, there is a double standard, but I mean, I think that's just society. Maybe in like a hundred years, it'll be different. I don't know. It wouldn't be because different of for feminism. me. Not for me. Well, you'll be dead in a hundred years. Whoa, whoa, Who cares? whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill the fuck out, all right? I'm not going anywhere. Um, let's see. I don't know where we are. Yeah, I'll just keep going. Fuck it. <laughs> as far as the never had a sympathy blowjob before, dot, dot, dot. I'm sure you've come across plenty of people who don't fit your pickiness. Has there ever been someone you typically would have said no to but for some reason, you did mess around with them. Like maybe you wanted some head just to get your dick wet, but refused to fuck them. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Psych. I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course. Of course. 
in my younger days. Um, There's a guy that I go and see literally just so he can eat me out. I won't even have sex with him. He, like, wants me to. And he wants me to, like, give him head, but I just... No. I use you for one thing, and that's it. And then I leave. And he's okay with that? Like, he gets no no, no satisfaction other than getting you off? Pretty much. I mean, he wants more, but I, I don't get I didn't ask more. what he wanted. I want to know what he gets. <laughs> no, he gets he gets to eat me out, and then I get to leave. Oh, my God. Where do you find these suckers? Jesus. Like, I, I can see using that as a ploy. Like a girl that's on the fence about sleeping with you. Listen, let me just eat your pussy. Let me eat your pussy. I'm going to eat your pussy so fucking good that, you know, it doesn't even matter. You're going to let me fuck afterwards. You give it one shot and nothing happens after that, though. I think I'm giving up on that one. It's just I, it's just weird to me. Um, but, yes, of course, I, I have a weird, sick need and always have to, like, sleep with as many people as I possibly can. As many women as I possibly can. I always have. I just want to sleep with as many women as I can. And I feel like I've done pretty fucking well. Um, so, so yeah, I wouldn't say that I just wanted to get my dick wet but refuse to fuck. I'm like, I mean, if I'm fucking going to put my dick in your mouth, might as well put it in your pussy and add one to the belt. <laughs> It's not so much like that these days. Um, I can't really imagine. I, the older I've gotten, I've been in situations where I'm just like, no, get the fuck away from me. Like, just no. No interest whatsoever. Just leave me the fuck alone. I'd rather go to sleep than, you know, get a nut from you. So, <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm guilty like everyone else. Um... Okay, the next one is the first one you tried to read. Okay. Hi, <laughs> I have a daddy, and he always talks after about how he loved what I did to him and etc. But when he doesn't, I feel like he didn't like it. Should I ask him something like feedback or that's annoying? Maybe if I can make something better or more enjoyable, I don't know. Just want to please him. Um... Oh, please, let, I me, don't... let me take this. Just let me take this. Let me. Okay. Okay. This okay. is what's wrong with you bitches. Stop letting your insecurities get in the way and fuck up a good piece of fucking dick for you. What are you doing? Just shut the fuck up. He's sleeping with you regularly. Like, just leave it alone. Unless he says something derogatory or negative about what you did. Just shut the fuck up. You don't need a fucking, you don't need, uh, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for? reassurance yeah let's use that one you don't need that shit every time you get fucking fucked like he's fucking you regularly he obviously likes to fuck you women always want to fuck shit up with words just shut the fuck up after i get another i don't want to talk about shit leave me the fuck alone i don't want to hear nothing good night at best good night or goodbye that's a good one too <laughs> i say just shut the fuck up and leave it alone <laughs> Because uh, don't let your insecurities get in the way. Be glad that you get complimented from time to time. You wouldn't be there if you felt, you know, if if there was no compliments coming, then maybe, maybe. But you get complimented. Just get out of your own head. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And I don't think you need to, like, I'll have good sex with, like, a guy that I sleep with. We have good sex every single time. Like, it's always good. Whatever. But we don't always talk about it because, like, it's just, like, the standard. You know what I mean? Like, if that's what it is, you don't need to talk about it every single time. Absolutely. Like, there's people that I sleep with. I sleep with them so much. Like, there's no need to, like, I don't need to compliment you or anything. And if I do, it, you know, it'll probably be me, like, sending you a video of us fucking a few days prior. Like, oh, remember when you did that? That shit was hot. You know? Like, you'll get your compliments, just you don't need them right away. The only thing you should be doing after sex is making a fucking sandwich for him. That's it. <laughs> feminism. Goddamn feminism. <laughs> Listen, that's true feminism. If you can make him a sandwich, 
right afterwards, put your clothes on and leave. I, 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 that's the definition of feminism in my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this shit up. Um, so I was told tonight that next week we will be able, or we should be able to take callers. Um, and the way that will work, we do this at about 9.30 um, East Coast time. And how that'll work is I will post something on Snapchat around between 9.30 and 10.30 next Tuesday um, and if you're able to get through, you're welcome to call and harass us. We'll probably harass you back. Um, so that should be fun. We are also looking into changing the format of this and we're working to do that, but so it may change a little bit in the upcoming weeks. So, um, you know, something to look forward to. Would you like to wrap it up? Oh, yes. Um, sweet dreams. Nighty night, dream of that pussy being tight. And remember, always be a good girl for daddy.